What's up YouTube, Jason here, more Mixology Reptiles in the snake room as always. Finally getting to this video, I know a bunch of people have been waiting for, and it has been desperately needed around here, because we are flat out of space, quite honestly. Um, breeding season has started, we've got girls building, we've probably got eggs on the way here before too long, and I've got males and females that need to be brought up into bigger tubs, so today, we're gonna go and build the 10 high uh, Sterilite 41 quart uh, 41 quart rack. Very similar to this one, except they're not gonna be on rails. And I'm using the Sterilite 41 quart underbed style uh, tub. They're very similar to these Freedom Breeder 40s, but very slightly wider uh, and obviously clear. So we're gonna get that rack built up. I'm gonna do a kind of a video like we have before, just kind of like a time lapse video. Uh, different style, I'm going to show you a new trick I'm going to try for gapping the tops of the, the racks for the tubs and making sure everything comes out straight, so I'll show you that. And we got to get this one up and running because I got my biggest females need to move up and I've got females that need to move up out of here into this one and males up into the 32s. So uh, let's get going. We're going to head to Lowe's, pick up all the materials. Uh, I've got my build list, my cut sheet here. This has, this is how I do my design. So you enter all the sizes that you need, all the pieces that, you know, I need four sides and 10 shelves and so forth. Um, and then this tells you out of a standard sheet of melamine or whatever you're using, uh, the best and most uh, optimal way to cut it out. So these will be in uh, the description and on the website as a downloadable PDF for the cut list specifically for this build, as well as the six high combos down there um and i think the rat rack is if if not it will be so let's go ahead and get to lowe's i just have them rough cut it and then i bring it back and i get exactly the sizes and cuts that i want because i don't really trust them to do it my way but uh yeah let's get this thing built because we desperately need it all right back from uh, lowe's now um hopefully you can see me the sun's really bright anyway i, I ended up having them cut most of them pretty much to size for the most part. Like all of the sides with the exception of this piece, this is scrap. All the sides are cut perfect width, so I just got to cut the ends off. I did that on purpose so that uh, when I get done putting in all the shelves, cause I'm trying a new tactic on the shelves I've never done. Once I get all the shelves in, starting from the top down, I'm gonna build it upside down, I'll show you. Then we'll cut the legs off even, that way it's all straight. Um, and then just cut the big pieces down. I gotta cut the shelves in half, obviously. So let's go ahead and get all the stuff cut up for good in their final form and we'll start assembling it we gotta get this done real quick though sneak peek to a video coming i know i've talked to you guys about this a lot but look at what we picked up check this out so basically you guys have seen the uh, rockstar cooler that we have this is almost exactly the same height it's very slightly taller it's the same depth front to back it's the same shape actually uh, with the curve but it's about 60 maybe 40 to 60 percent wider so it's about half again as wide as the other one and obviously with double doors so i can get i think 12 clutches in the or egg boxes in the the monster one or the rockstar one rather this one i should be able to get probably 18 maybe 20. so uh, i doubt it's going to get done and ready to go for this season the, the Rockstar one is up and running. Um, but yeah, we got another one. So this will get our build done. And then it, inevitably I'll probably end up selling the, the uh, Rockstar one because I'm, I'm gonna run out of room before too long. Uh, this one's cool because it's got windows on all sides. So anyway, let's get this rack built. shelves 
cut to the same length. I'll put all the description on this, uh, just all the information in the description on size and everything. And uh, I'll maybe I'll put a little tag right here. It tells you what size they are. We got all the shelves, 10 of them plus a top, obviously, and four sides. Now, I'm gonna do this one open-sided or semi-open-sided, so you'll notice that this side obviously does not span the full length of the shelf. Uh, these are 10-inch segments, front and back, so there will be a gap in the middle of about 16 inches, uh, 15 inches, rather. And that's really, in this case, is really for weight and for cost. Um, I was able to build this entire rack out of three sheets of melamine. If I wanted to do closed sides, it would take at least one, if not two more. So um, anyway, the way we're gonna do this is a little bit different. This looks similar to our builds previously, but is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all four corners put on the top. This is gonna be the top of, of the, the uh, rack. You notice I have no edge taping yet. Uh, the reason for that is we're gonna cut these legs down um, they're longer than this rack will be tall. So once we get to the last one, then we'll cut them off flush and then I can edge tape those. Um, so we'll do all the edge taping last, but I'm gonna do the four corners on the top and you can't see it from there probably, but I have these lines drawn all the way down for three spots for screws and uh, in three in each corner. So there'll be 12 screws per shelf. That should be plenty strong and I shouldn't have so much in the screws that we're gonna split the shelf apart. So. Um, I'm gonna get the top done with the four corners and then what we're gonna do is take it off of the bench and stand it on my garage floor. You want a really flat surface for this, but stand it on the garage floor upside down on this top. All right guys, there we go. This is the top, like I said. I got all four uh, corners put on. It's just being braced up on the other end, but that's all that's screwed in is the four corners to the top. I made a point while I was doing it. I made this mistake last time. Uh, once put like uh, one screw in each one of these and then square it up the way you want But before you put the second screw that stops it from moving Measure between here and here and go to the other end and measure between so it should be exactly the same That'll help you make sure that it's square and that because over the length of a six foot or whatever uh, Rack if you're off by a degree, it's gonna be pretty substantial at the end. So Glad that we took a minute while I was doing this to remember that we missed a step. So we're gonna do that before I start putting in the shelves. And that is, I need to recess all of the heat tape. Haven't done that part yet. Uh, like I said, this one is not on rails like the other one is. So I have to recess the heat tape so it's not touching the tub. So let's do that real quick. I'll show you uh, where I'm putting it and why. I'll get all 10 of them done and then we'll turn this thing over and start putting shelves in. All right guys, so here we are. We've got uh, the shelves cut. They're 35 by 16 and a half. Again, to fit the 41 quart Sterilite long tub, the underbed style tote. So is what I wanna do here is, as you can see, we're using four inch heat tape and I'm using single individual cut pieces, not a single, or not a long uh, single piece like I do on the six high combo. And I'll, I'll show you why later when we get to that step. So is what we wanna do is we want the heat tape to be towards the back quarter, back uh, 25 to 30% of the tub, but not all the way against this back wall. You need the snake to be able to get away from it a little bit or kind of behind the heat tape, so to speak. So is what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm just gonna square up, just pick an end, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna square up the end and push the tub all the way back. That'll be as far back as it'll go in the rack. And it should leave me about a half an inch past the front of the tub. That's the idea. Then, I just wanna kinda of look at this and get an idea. So the end of the tub is here. That's about an inch and a half, two inches forward on the, the uh, shelf. We wanna put it about two, or two inches or so in front of this back edge. So this back corner is, like I said, it's two inches from the back of the shelf. If we went, and put the heat tape, that's the five inches, there's five inches right there, five inches from the back of the shelf. We'll slide this in just so you can kind of get a feel for it. And I'll show you guys here. You can see that there's room behind the heat tape and obviously in front of, this is four inch, four inches plenty for this size tub. That's pretty standard on the Freedom Breeder stuff anyway. But that gives us room behind the heat tape 
and obviously in front of it, they can get kind of centered over the top of it. We could even go a little bit farther forward, uh, but I think that'll work from there. So with that, all we need to do now is uh, measure it, figure out exactly what we want. So that's five. Let's see what six looks like just for, for giggles. Six actually looks pretty good. Like I said, the tubs are 35 inches long. Um, so about a third of the way back would be about 10 inches where the heat tape is. So total with the heat tape, we're sitting at just that 12 inches total. Center of the heat tape is right at 10 inches back on the tub. So um, five to six inches from the back to the back edge of the heat tape either way. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do six inches actually now that we looked at it. Um, Cause you gotta remember this, these tubs are gonna be for our biggest girls, the, the 3000 gram you know, range, the real big ones. Um, and so they're gonna be a lot bigger round. They're gonna be longer bodied. So we move this forward a little bit. That gives them this, basically this back half to get situated over the heat where they want it. So we're gonna do six inches from the back of the shelf to the back of the heat tape. Mark it off on both sides with the guide like I did in all the other videos. We're gonna route them and then we'll move on from there. All right, you guys, obviously I didn't record the actual routing process of the shelves this time. I've done it before, it's in my other videos. If you haven't seen it, go check that out. Uh, it's just so much easier to rip through them real quick and get it done. I did it a little bit different though. Let me show you what I did this time. So you can see here, we did not route all the way to the edge on either side. And I'll explain this stuff in a minute. Um, but did not route both sides. And the reason why is these 41 quart sterilites have a bit of a taper to them. So you can see the tape goes right to the edge of the sides of the tub all the way and fits perfectly in the bottom. So there was really no need to go edge to edge. And I wasn't going to do an individual wrap like I do on the uh, combo where it's one piece that goes all the way down because on a 10 high, especially when the shelves are this wide, uh, you get to the point where there's a, a significant uh, length of total amount of heat tape. If you get to that point, depending on whether you have the end that's plugged in at the top or the bottom, either way, um, that part will be hotter than the other end because of the reduction in, in uh, electricity. So on these 10 highs, including the one that the Freedom Breeder tubs I have, I wire every shelf individually. So uh, they're all wired identical with exactly the same length wire and then plugged into a power strip and that's plugged into the thermostat. This is the same way that the Freedom Breeder uh, commercial racks are done as well. Every level is wired to a big power splitter. So that's what all these other things are for here. So you can see, I haven't done it yet. I'll do. I'll show you as I do it. I routed this channel in every tub, or on every shelf rather, for my wire after I get it soldered to the ends to sit flush underneath so it sits under the tub all the way back. And then this one is my control. This is the shelf that'll go in the middle, probably the fifth or fourth or fifth shelf, something like that. And that's the one that has the uh, probe for the thermostat attached to it. And it's just taped to the element underneath. Um, I've talked about this numerous times that I always do the probe on the heat tape, not in the tub. And then you just set this heat tape to do whatever you need. So if, you, if it has to be set to 94 to get the hot spot to be 90 in the tub, so be it. I do it that way because I take my tubs all the way out, I wash them in the wash basin, the whole nine yards. And if you put a control tub in, you either have a, an empty tub that you're wasting or you have to uh, undo all of your uh, throw, uh, probe stuff or you can't take it all the way out. It's just pain in the ass. So I do it under the heat tape. So um, next step is gonna be, I'm actually gonna do this part a little bit different than I have before as well. Um, I'm gonna go and route, or not route, uh, edge tape all the way around um, the whole thing in one sheet before I put the shelves in the sides. So there's gonna be an area obviously, you know, where the, the side comes down that's gonna be covered. But my thinking is, um, first of all, it's gonna be way easier to edge tape when they're uh, separate like this than when it's in the rack already. But my thinking is that those areas that are behind uh, the sides, the legs, they're still sealed. So it should help with any kind of swelling if you pour some water, if you spill some water or whatever. So uh, I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna edge tape all of these and I'm gonna edge tape the four legs 
um, at least down to the feet. I'm not gonna go around the bottom yet because I have to cut them off. And then we get to start assembling it and that's where I get to try this new technique that I have never done before. So I'm gonna set you back up on the tripod, edge tape all of these shelves in the corners, and then we'll move on to assembly. got all the shelves edge taped they're ready to go uh, on the rack but before I do it I want to go ahead and get all of the uh, power cables soldered on so they're completely done uh, this is gonna be much easier to do when it's out like this um, quick note by the way the edge taping of course not required uh, I believe that not only does it look a lot better personally I think it helps uh, significantly with the melamine racks to last a lot longer by having all those raw edges sealed if you get any water in there or you know the the snake rooms 55 60 percent humidity you know it should help with swelling and make them last a lot longer I haven't had any issues so far um, this step I prefer to solder all of my leads um, just because I, I know how to do it and I, I like that it's a stronger bond uh, so you can do the crimping method that Reptile Basics uh, shows on theirs. So as what I've done, I've got 10 of these cables. I just bought the shortest uh, standard two-prong extension cord I could. The key here is, this is critically important, all of these have to be the same length. Like, it, they have to be 100% specific. If you're off by an eighth of an inch, it's not going to matter. But they have to be the same length. And the reason why is we're wiring this rack in parallel. So real quick, if you, if you look at the way that the, the six high combo is done with that single piece that goes all the way to the bottom, that is effectively a series. Every shelf gets a little bit less power than the one before it in the run. In parallel, the idea is every shelf, every piece of heat tape will get exactly the same amount of voltage across the entire length of the rack. That is only true if the heat tape pieces are exactly the same length and the cords are exactly the same length. If I made this one a foot longer than, than the rest, it would get less voltage because it has farther to travel. Um, this way, all shelves are balanced. They're all exactly the same. So make sure all 10 of them are the same length within reason. And then is all I'm gonna do is split these, peel them back, and then you'll notice, obviously when I showed you these earlier, that the uh, channel, I don't know if you can see it, that the channel goes up the side. So we can go ahead and cut the end of one side off short so that it fits straight and flush in that channel. So I'm gonna pull you guys in close. I'm gonna do this first one just so you can see how it's done. And then I'm just gonna speed through them real quick and we're gonna start assembling this thing. Also on these, there is no polarity specific on a two prong and the heat tape. Uh, I make them all the same just so that I know that they're all the same, but that's ir uh, irrelevant at this point. So on a standard two prong, there's a smooth side and then there's a ribbed side. So for the sake of this discussion, I'm gonna make the ribbed side the long one that goes to the far end and the smooth side, the short one will get cut off even. It doesn't really matter. There is no polarity. So come on in here, I'll show you what I'm doing and then we'll get moving on to the next one. Okay, hopefully you can see this all right. Obviously we got a shelf here with the heat tape put in and this channel that we routed out at the beginning. We got one of these. I don't need any of these ones right now. Again, it doesn't matter uh, which side you use. They're exactly the same because they're not uh, polarity specific. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of set this in here as if it were soldered in place. So now we have one that's gonna go here and we got one that's gonna go up here. And then the rest of this will get stapled in place and uh, and held down. All right, so basically we've got cable now, it's got a short end. Again, this part is okay that they're not the same when it comes to, this, to the parallel because each one of those is gonna be the same way. It's critical that these are the same length and that these are the same length. There's probably an easier, a better way to do this, but this is super fast. And I'm literally just gonna melt a hole. This is covered in plastic. And I've talked about this before. Uh, I'm just gonna melt a hole through the plastic here. All 
I got two holes there. Now we're gonna take our, our wire and a little bit of solder. And All right, next up is getting the shelves in the rack. As you can see, we got them all, all uh, wired up, soldered, taped down. I use the aluminum tape on here. It'll work just fine with the heat tape, no big deal. I've got the uh, temperature probe one over there, and the rack is now upside down on my floor. You need a nice, flat, solid surface to do this on. Turn the rack upside down on its top, and this is how I'm gonna make sure that all of my shelves are the, are the right size now, instead of using those blocks like we did in the other video. Um, I don't plan on putting the lids on these tubs in this rack. I don't need to, so I don't need to make sure I have room for that. So, so what I'm gonna do, I learned this from Chris Searcy at uh, Ball Pythons 101. Uh, I have this piece of, I think this is eighth inch birch, just a piece of leftover that I had from a project. Um, I don't remember what this is for, anyway. So what I'm gonna do is take this piece, we're gonna set it in here, like so. Then we're gonna take our tub, and I'm just gonna use the same tub for every level. They're all the same, so it shouldn't matter. I'm gonna put the tub in here, upside down, just like it would be normally. Then, this isn't one of the shelves we're building with. But I'll show you. Then you take a shelf, and you put it in on top of the tub, like so. And now, when you go to screw this in on the sides, you have this eighth inch gap, then the tub, then the shelf. Screw this in here, in here, all the way down. And when you pull this out, you'll have an eighth inch gap above your tub when it's sitting on the shelf. Take it out, move it up to this one. Same thing, all the way to the top. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to time lapse this one. I want you guys to see it kind of grow with me, but yeah, here we go. Well, the camera died, uh, obviously. So you didn't get to see the time lapse finish all the way up to when it was finished, put together. Um, it's a few weeks later, about a week and a half later now, I guess. And I've just been crazy busy doing other videos, getting other stuff uh, finished up and whatnot. But uh, I kind of picked away the best I could. Good news is it's done. So there it is. She's finished. Let me take you off of here and show you. Lighting's not great in here, obviously. Um, but here is my new 10 high. You can see uh, it's overbuilt as always. Three, three inch long number 10 screws in every corner. Um, a little, little close up here. Obviously the recessed uh, heat tape spot did not go all the way to the edges and then you saw how we uh, taped down all of the leads that come back to here. We turn it around into the light here. Obviously on casters, I have everything on wheels, it's so much easier. But yeah, all the leads coming down to plug into the power strip. This allows me to do a couple of things. First of all, like I said, it makes sure that every level stays the same temperature all the time uh, as the one above it and below it. But it allows me to, if I take, say, this tub out for whatever reason, there's nobody in it, I'll just unplug it, and now I'm not heating that one, not using the energy. Um, it's kind of really convenient. Like I said, it's the, it's the same way that all the big commercial racks are done, and uh, it's the same way that my 10 High Freedom, Freedom Rear 40 is finished. Um, it's really, really heavy, obviously, really big. It is taller than the Freedom Breeder, a little bit and obviously wider the tubs are definitely bigger uh, but this is going to be for my big breeder females in fact i've got the tubs right here so we can show you just like that so
So nice little gap at the top, just a little air gap. Fits snug on both sides, recessed heat tape. And I showed you obviously when I was working on it that the heat tape just goes edge to edge inside. Doesn't extend as fast it. And then we put this back brace on uh, to tighten up the, the shelves a little bit and make it so you can't push the tubs out the back and get escapees. It's nice because with the gap the way I do it, the, this is about the eighth inch gap, I can come way out here and hang the tub even with a snake in it. I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. So it gives you a lot of workability room. You can get in here and clean it, stuff like that. Let me show you too real quick. I talked about this uh, a while back when I was uh, talking about doing this build. I have really cool water dishes for these. Let me get them, hang on. So as you guys know, um, I always build, I build my own water dishes with the, the couplers, the uh, PVC couplers and these silver dishes I get from the hardware store. Um, but they're just not that big and these are fairly big girls and whatnot. Uh, so I wanted something a little bigger. When I was at Ikea in Denver a few months ago, I found, I found these. So I don't remember what these are called. Um, there's some Swedish name I can't pr pronounce, I'm sure. Um, I don't know if you can see the label, it'll focus. But they're just little, like, I'd say probably four or five inch in diameter plastic dishes with rubber edges on the bottom so they just don't slide. And they fit perfectly in these tubs. I'm super excited when I saw these. This is such a neat design. So they're like the perfect size for this tub. They've got the rubber on them. They're wedged so that they can't be tipped over. Um, but it's nice because now the, the female can move it around where she wants it if she needs to get up here and cool off or wrap around it or whatever. Um, it's not metal so it won't transfer the heat the same way the metal dishes will. But even in the tubs now, the metal dishes are wrapped in plastic so uh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, there you go guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna plug it in here in just a minute and get it going, make sure it all works the way I want. And uh, next week, either next week's video or the one after that, depending on how I upload these, um, I'm gonna do a moving up video, a moving day video. So we've got a lot of stuff here that needs to be moved. Biggest girls out of the 41, or out of the 40 into the 41. Uh, a lot of stuff from the 32s up to the 40 and a ton of stuff out of the 15s into the 32s. We're gonna be moving a bunch of stuff around. So stay tuned for that. We'll do a really cool little montage moving day. But there you go. 10 high, Sterilite 41 using the long tubs with the little bowls I got from uh, Ikea. They're only like two or, two or three dollars a piece. So sweet deal there. And uh, I will see you guys next week. Um, like and subscribe as always. If you build something, tag me in. I get that stuff all the time. I really enjoy seeing it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.